according to John Mackey and Lenny Moore, there is a cause for concern. Wealthy blues ain't nothing. Guess a good dream that's gone bad. Wealthy blues ain't nothing. Just a good dream that's gone bad, Lord, 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 Lord. The blues ain't nothing. Good dream that's gone bad, Lord, Lord. It's the worst old feeling a man is ever had. In the opinion of Captain H.D. Durham, commanding officer of the Bainbridge Naval Training Center, and Mr. James Smith, executive director of the camp, there is a cause for concern. It came about after uh, certain disturbances in the city of Baltimore and two Baltimore Colt individuals, athletes, John Mackey and Lenny Moore, came to the mayor and uh, said uh, we ought to have some sort of a camp or something for uh, these youngsters. I think our uh, headquarters board will show the reaction of the informal letters that coming from many satisfied parents within the neighborhood, the coordinators who have served from the neighborhood as uh, neighborhood coordinators for Camp Concern, they all have expressed their views of the program being uh, from excellent to outstanding. The Navy had uh, facilities that they wasn't using here at uh, Bainbridge. Through funding by HEW and OEO, Camp Concern started. The Offices of Economic Opportunity, Health Education and Welfare, and the mayor of Baltimore, Thomas J. D'Alessandro, know there's a cause for concern. Well, it's the greatest reflection of the kind of cooperation that's needed between the municipal government dealing with urban problems and uh, the military installations that surround a big urban community. Uh, we need it here in Baltimore, a summer camp for our disadvantaged youngsters living in the inner city. Uh, we sought out the, the U.S. Navy and the Camp Bainbridge installation. It was a perfect combination of government, as reflected by the city administration and by the federal government through the U.S. Navy, dealing with an urban problem and providing summertime recreation for youngsters. To hear a child from a disadvantaged area in the inner city of Baltimore recount some new experiences there certainly is a cause for concern. Every morning when we go to get on the bus to go to Camp Concern, wow, we see some apple trees were on our way coming. And when we get to Camp Concern, we have to go and sit on the bleachers, and then, then we um, go swimming, and then we are going to eat our lunch. And I think Camp Concern is a very nice it's a very nice place to come. It hurts too much to laugh, and I'm too old for crying. It hurts too much to laugh, and I'm too old for crying. Lord, 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 Lord. It hurts too much to laugh, and I'm too old for crying. Lord, Lord. When I sang the blues, just to ease my troubles in mind. When I get on the bus in the morning, we always have to cross this big long bridge to see this water all with fishes jumping up in it. On the way over, then we sit and then we pass the on bridge with water, and we look in the water and we see boats. Then we get, then we see cows. And horses. So this morning we went swimming, and from swimming we come down from, from lunch. I saw a pear tree, and I saw um, an apple tree, and, um, and a tree, you know, like bushes and leaves all on them, spider webs all on them and everything. We go into the bridge, then we get there. And when we come camp for time, we get off the bus, then we go and sit down, and then we say the pledge. The Pledge of Allegiance starts our program. We both felt that this is something that should be open for the campers to do, but an idea to see if they would enjoy it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. From the 
first day this year that we started it. The camp director asked for a volunteer to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Some 200 hands were held. He picked one girl, 13 years old, to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. And this is, this is real heartwarming and gratifying to see a 13-year-old step down in front of 550 of her contemporaries, peers, and subordinates and say, follow with me and say the Pledge of Allegiance. And I think uh, the expression and the cooperation, voluntary cooperation on the part of the campus spoke for itself by saying, we are Americans, we are proud of being American. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This becomes so popular that the camp director has been using four or five to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. From this, we move on into the different activities. One, two, two, to the corner. Come on, man, you gotta pick on him. That's not a pick, boy. You gotta pick. One, one. Got the mismatch in the corner. Mike Farrell, come here, boy. Come here. Go to the other side, get him, get him. Other side, put it up, put it back. Come back, go to the other side. Come on, you got the sink. Come on, Mel, come up. Quick. Move the ball, gotta move the ball. And move the ball, come back out. Time, time, time. Come on, Woody, what you doing, boy? Camp Concern uh, started last year. These youngsters, uh, some 500, 550 strong daily, six days a week, nine weeks last summer, and again, nine weeks this summer, come out here and uh, arrive here around 10.30 in the morning and leave around 5, 5.15 in the afternoon. Kids that are selected for Camp Concern come from all over Baltimore City. It is the policy of the executive director, of which I agree, that we have all types of participation, regardless as to race, creed, color, and we have no lines dividing Baltimore City, no set ghetto areas. The camp is open to all disadvantaged youth in Baltimore City. The uh, mayor is very interested in this and uh, is doing all he can to support it. Well, I go there about three times uh, each summer, uh, initially to start off the program and once or twice during the course of the summertime program to see just exactly how it's operating, how the youngsters are progressing. Uh, we concentrate not only on recreation, you know, we also concentrate on health. Proper oral hygiene or the correct way of brushing your teeth. Now, the teeth in the mouth are divided into three portions. The crown, which is the exposed portion or the visible portion in the mouth. The neck of the tooth, this small portion right here, where the enamel and the dentin of the roots meet, and the root, which carries the nerve endings to the pulp chamber. Now, the crown is covered with enamel, which is the hardest substance in the body. Now, the mouth is divided into four sections or quadrants. The upper right outside surface, the upper left, the lower right, and the lower left. Sailors around the camp know there's a cause for concern. Many volunteer to help the counselors. Many volunteer to teach. In their spare time, they lend a hand in the subject areas that make camp concern just a little bit better. And work toward the back of the mouth. How many times do you brush your teeth? After every meal. After every meal? Yes, that's twice a day. Twice a day? Yes. That's good. You should brush at least after every meal. If you have a snack, you should at least rinse your mouth with water if you cannot brush. Okay, how many times do you go to the dentist a year? Once. Once a year? Do you find that when you go to the dentist, you have a lot of decay? Well, we do have follow-up procedure through our health component services. We direct them to our local health station or through the health department who assist us in uh, funneling these people where they can get aid. That's exactly the point. Uh, a lot of us talk about recreation, but health plays an equally important task. From a practical point of view, we're still in our infancy, uh, but we're working along the way, and here, uh, the federal government, uh, through the U.S. Navy and through Bainbridge, have planted the seed for a health program that allows follow-through by the municipal government, which we hope will provide good health checkups and results 
for youngsters who ordinarily would never be exposed to that kind of examination. I know what they put out is good, solid, sound information. They show film on uh, social diseases. They show film on uh, drug abuse. They have lectures on uh, alcoholism. It is good information and is put out at a level that they can understand. After a, a day of uh, recreation, health lectures, dental hygiene lectures, basketball clinics, wrestling, and two good Navy meals. They leave tired but happy and... These people, and this is the inspirational part of it, uh, for once we have a program that people become involved. We're in an age where we're talking about uh, community involvement and decentralization. Camp Concern offers just that for the neighborhood coordinator. And it's the greatest thing in the world to come down early in the morning through the city, especially in the hot months of June and July and August, and see these youngsters uh, congregating on corners at different intervals of the key intersections of the city, waiting for Bainbridge, the Bainbridge bus. And everybody now, throughout the community, knows why these youngsters are gathering there and where they're going, and they're cognizant of the tremendous contribution that the military uh, and the uh, area of metropolitan Baltimore is playing to help us uh, with our summertime programs. They go out there, they enjoy it, they're out of the street, and they uh, you see, when they're loose in the street and no place to go, as you can see around in this neighborhood, we really don't have any place for recreation. But the children can go out there, and they get wholesome meals, they have uh, leaders out there to instruct them as to what to do and how they should do it, and they really enjoy it. They come back, you find they're different children. These uh, counselors are some of the finest individuals I've, I've ever met. They do work six days a week, and they get a new group every, every Monday. So what they did last week, or how they instructed that individual last week, doesn't hold over for the following week because they have to start all over again. And I imagine they're, they do have many tiring experiences. This is an amazing thing about the way they handle these, these kids. Well, it gives them a good head start. It, knows, it learns them how to treat people. It learns them in so many ways and so many other things to do. There's one counselor per 25 youngster. They handle them all differently, but they all demand that these youngsters obey. There's one up there in particular that is a fiend on calcinics. They call him Tough Tony, but uh, no one resents Tony. Our uh, staff is made up of, of young college students. Uh, we're made up of young school teachers and college-bound high school students who might have many talent that we need as a staff person. They are selected by coming into our office uh, and with a thorough interview to test those qualities that we feel that are very important, the temperament, the patience, the endurance, and the will to work for the good and the spirit of camp concern to show that concern for the, our campers. I do talk to them, those that are teachers, about their degrees, and a good many of their degrees are in uh, social work, but not all either. Uh, there's one gent up there that uh, degrees in uh, physics, for instance. But I think they're all interested in the, what I said before, is we have a problem and let's do something about it. We do not select the campus. It's the people, grassroots people from the community. They tell us that they, they go swimming. They got a plenty to eat. <laughs> and they have so many things to do that it keeps their mind occupied all the time. They're really being exposed to something that they should, be, should have been exposed to. These things are not available in, in any center around here for them. We have a uh, few portable pools around, but nothing really like you have there. And then mostly I like going swimming. I think it's fun. The swimming pool that's used is not used by the Navy in the summertime. It's used by the Navy in the wintertime, but in the summer we have two outdoor pools and uh, we don't use the indoor pool in the summertime. You definitely need, definitely need the cooperation of the uh, camp commander. 
And here with Captain Durham, we've been blessed in having a, a naval officer who welcomed us with open arms and has gone uh, all out in an effort to make us feel welcomed. I make it a point to be with these youngsters at least twice a day and participate in one meal, go around and talk with them. Well, they tell me the games they play, they go in swimming and all in those hills they have to climb and all, it's quite interesting. We have to realize that all commands do not have the same available facilities and uh, I would encourage any command to do this program provided he has the facilities and I do here. Last year we had a total of a few over 5,000 different participants. This year we're running just about that norm. Monday, Tuesday, they're a little shy. Wednesday, they're a little warmer. And by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all of them want to shake hands with me. They want to identify me. They call me an admiral. They call me a general. They call me a colonel. Uh, I even had one youngster to come up to me last year and count my stripes, say one, two, three, four. Hiya, Sergeant. Last year, we gave them free access to the milk, the mechanical cow, in the mess hall. And these youngsters, it was hot, the milk was cold, so they would drink too much milk. Consequently, we had some stomach aches that we had to take care of. This year, we issue the milk, and they can have as much as they want, but it isn't that free. There's one other thing that we corrected in the mess hall, that these youngsters start eating at 12 o'clock, and at 1300, they have to be in uh, the theater for a health lecture or in another room that we have for a dental hygiene lecture. So they have to eat in 45 minutes. The first couple of days, it took a little longer than 45 minutes. After watching the chow line, I saw what the holdup was. It was soup. A nine, 10 year old youngster is not accustomed to handling a, a GI tray. Now, if you put a bowl of hot soup in on top of that, then they can't handle it, they spill it. So we cut out the soup. Besides who needs hot soup in the summer? It's obvious that we must have money to put a program like this over. First, we must think in terms of HEW, Health and Education Welfare, of our contribution of $100,000. We have the OEO through the Community Action Agency of Baltimore City, who also fund us the $52,000. Uh, we have in-kind services of the Bureau of Recreation of Baltimore City and also in-kind services uh, from the Health Department of Baltimore City. How much does it cost the Navy? There's not one cent channel to Camp Concern by the Navy. We do not spend any funds. In fact, most of our funding comes through the federal government through the Office of Health Education and Welfare. And neither am I encroaching upon any officer and enlisted through recreation facilities because the facilities that are used by the campers are not normally used in the summertime. In the opinion of Oscar Job, Camp Concern has proved its worth by giving the disadvantaged youth from the urban area of Baltimore a chance to play without the high risks of crippling injuries that occur on the city streets. So far this year, we have not had a single major casualty. We have had incidents where kids have fallen, slipped down, skin, the knee, uh, something similar to that. Last year, I think the only incident we had that we could consider serious was a fractured arm. And I'll lay this to two things, possibly. One, the youngster knows how to take care of himself. And two, that there is good, strong discipline among the counselors. We interview them and screen them on the basis of many factors that we're looking for in a good counselor. We kept a uh, lessons learned pamphlet last year and uh, everything that uh, seemingly went wrong because I had never run a program like this we wrote it down and we worked this winter and uh, we got committees together they did uh, get down to evaluating camp concern right at the bottom and far as housekeeping for us and this is was so important we learned so many uh, points of what our needs might be in this area of housekeeping for camp concern. Some of the things that do, don't uh, sound too difficult uh, would be such as uh, parking the buses. Where do you park the buses for the pickup? Well, this created a problem because youngsters, like any other youngster, 
don't grow like the crow flies. So you have to uh, make sure that the bus is available and close by. We move the parking of the bus. I think that if another agency was going to go into a project similar to this, they might want to check with uh, the executive director of the uh, officials here at Bainbridge and sort of use our program for a guideline uh, to which to set their program up by. What we learned uh, happened to be uh, to expand our services uh, in health, the component, which includes dentistry screening. We learned to, uh, that we had to increase some of our staff to get maximum participation in some of the facilities that Bainbridge provided for us. And specifically, we're talking about the Olympic swimming pool, which we have, and found out we were much too short in staff to get the maximum use out of that pool. And in fact, as a result of our effort at Cane Bainbridge, uh, we have been fortunate enough to recruit or enlist the support of other military installations in and around Baltimore to do a similar type summer recreational program. Not of the magnitude or the size of camp concern, but at least they wanted to get in the swim of things, so to speak, as at least participating, uh, representing their own uh, uh, services uh, in helping uh, the mayor of Baltimore and the city administration deal with the urban problem. According to Captain H.D. Durham, he meets the challenge of camp concern head on until 2 o'clock because... At 1400, the pop band moves in uh, about four or five days a week. And I guess this is where it comes out that I'm an old square. I just have to, have to leave. I can't take that type of music. <laughs> is a cause for camp concern, a cause that is familiar to many in this country today, a cause that is found in every major city where the disadvantaged are pushed out of the way for progress. It is caused by big industry, riots, racism, riots, poverty, riots. And we have a social problem here. I think we can say it's caused by... Whatever we want to say it's caused by, but I know where the responsibility lies. It lies in the American citizen. My mission here at Bainbridge has not changed one bit. I am still uh, charged with providing services so that trained male and female Navy types go to the fleet. But we're all charged as commanders of bases to, for community relations, and this is where I move in as a, in my community relations project. The youngsters received the tangible benefits uh, of the uh, program, but the mothers and the neighbors and down in the neighborhoods see these buses come, see their children leave, uh, see the uh, children pick up their spirits and also pick up weight in many instances if you're talking butter and bread and uh, come back a happy child, a more alive child, a more interested child. And this, I think, has been a soothing effect uh, throughout the city. We don't operate the program with the idea that by doing this program, we're avoiding any civil disturbance or anything of that nature. We're programming for people. It's a good program per se. The results justify what we've done, and we hope we're planting the seed uh, for these youngsters to develop into solid citizens. Let's take this youngster that uh, comes out here. He's probably sat next to a youngster in the school that bragged about being in a camp. Now this youngster can tell his classmate, yes, I was at camp concern. I don't think enough can be said for a program like Camp Concern, where you take the youngster and treat him as an individual. Camp Concern does. 
it notices them. There is a cause for concern. Camp Concern is a program that supports this cause. And it's not a piecemeal approach or a cooling off approach as far as operating under duress that if we don't do something, we're going to have uh, disturbances. It's just a good program, and that's the way we started it from the very beginning. When we get on the bus to go back home, we, sometimes we pass the buses and, and the children be laughing and playing on the bus, and then we talk and, and play on the bus. And some of the, the big kids, they smoke on the bus. Well, I may be blue, I won't be blue always. Yes, I may be blue, I won't be blue always. Lord, 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 Lord. I may be blue, I won't be blue always. Lord, Lord. Cause the sun gon' shine my back door someday. Cause the sun gon' shine my back door someday. Cause the sun gon' shine my back door someday.